Okay, so the purpose of this video is so that you can get familiar with the equipment that we have here at school to do the CPR training. Um, so we have the Preston Adult and Infant CPR Mannequins, which I'm gonna show you, and uh, the Practic Trainer AEV Trainer, and the Ambu Bag for the Bag Mask Device. So here's gonna be our agenda. Um, how to replace the lung bag in the adult and the infant, using the bag mask in the adult and the infant, the compression monitor lights in the adult and the infant, which that'll make more sense when you see the video, and then using the AED. All right, so replacing the lung bag, I have it listed out here step by step, but I'm gonna show you in the video and it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, first, you want to locate the lung bags. They're usually in the bag that comes with the mannequin. There are 10 tabs all along the mannequin, which I'll show you in the video. You're going to fold this bag like down the dotted lines like that. Put that piece into the mouth, um, line it up where it goes, replace this chest piece, and attach the tabs on the side of the head, which you'll see in the next section. Okay, so today I'm gonna to show you how to put the lung bag in to the Preston uh, CPR mannequin. This one has the heart rate monitor as well, and it also has the jaw thrust component. The first thing that needs to happen is this entire top section or the chest piece needs to come off. There are a whole bunch of small tabs that you have to unhook. I already have them unhooked. There are 10 of them. You've got to remove that before you do anything else. The other thing I'm gonna do is take this down and I'll show you why in a second. Um, I think it's easier to get the bag through with this plastic piece off. Then the way the instructions read from the manufacturer is to fold this on the dotted lines like so. Just like that. And then I have this kind of semi-rigid piece here. This is what I'm gonna put through the mouth. Because this is a jaw thrust, you have to tilt the chin back. Otherwise, uh, this bag won't go down very easily. And you have to be careful because that'll happen um, because we don't have this piece holding it in place. Okay, otherwise your head's gonna pop up. So the way I do it, it's gonna look that like so. Push it down. And then because I did it that way, I can easily grab this plastic bag here. If I have this covered down, it's a little harder for me to get that. Um, so once I pull it through and give it enough slack, then I'll put that piece down like that. I'm gonna unfold my bag right over the uh, circle gonna put my chest piece back on. Again, there are those 10 little tabs over there to hold it into place. And I'm gonna put this on. There are little hooks on both sides of the face, either side of the ear. And once you've done that, you are ready to go. In this section, I'm gonna show you how to put the lung bag in to the infant Preston mannequin. It's similar to the adult in that you have this chest piece that you pull down. However, fortunately for the baby, there's only two tabs. So there's only two tabs that you need to remove at the top. And then I can just kind of pull this piece down. I'm gonna do that same maneuver that I did with the other bag. This is just a smaller bag. So folding it in, one, two, three, four on the dotted line. So you're gonna end up with a piece that looks like this. This is the part that's gonna go into the baby's mouth. I gotta tilt the head back a little bit so I can open up the airway and then the bag easily comes through. I'm gonna put the circle piece where the circle is, pull that down a little bit more. That can go back up. And then just like on the adult, there are little tabs by the ears 
and put that on. And then your baby is ready to go. All right, so the next section is using the bag mask. Oh, we have the Ambu bag mask. The first thing is making sure that the bridge of the nose is on the nose part. Um, that's one mistake that I've seen students make quite a bit. Make sure you get a good seal with um, a C-clamp. And I'll kind of show that with my hand in the video. Um, it's just a way that you can, can make sure that the mask is sealed correctly over uh, the nose and mouth so that you don't have any air coming through. You're gonna give two breaths over one second each. You really wanna watch for the chest to rise on the mannequin, it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, and if it doesn't rise, then check your seal. Make sure that that chin is tilted up um, so that you can actually see the chest rise. Alrighty, so we're gonna learn how to use the Ambu bag or the bag mask on the Preston mannequin. This one is a jaw thrust, so it's a little bit tricky to get the air in. Whenever you're using the bag mask, the first thing is to make sure that we have a good seal on the mask. Now this is a little tricky if you have small hands, which I do, all right, to try to get a good seal. The other thing is make sure that the bridge of the nose is on this top part. I've seen students have it turned this way. Okay, make sure the nose piece, the kind of, think of it like a triangle, the top of that triangle is, is bridged over the nose. So on this one, it's a little hard because I have to pull that head, tilt the head back and squeeze the bag, but you can see there that I've got my two breaths in. If you have a, a, a second person with you, they can hold this body down and then that way it won't slide back. As you can see there, that I have the whole chest rising up. Okay, if I don't do that part, then um, if I don't tilt the head back, nothing, there's no air that's gonna go into this mannequin. It's just gonna come out the sides. All right, so same thing for the infant. Um, make sure the nose part is on the bridge of the nose. Check the seal. Um, you're giving two breaths over one second. Watch for the chest to rise. If it's not working, check your seal. Make sure the chin is tilted back. All right, now I'm gonna show uh, rescue breaths with the Ambu bag for the infant. You're gonna take, remember that nose piece goes by the nose. You're gonna take this small piece and have a good clamp over the baby's um, nose and mouth. Again, the head needs to tilt back on this piece of equipment or the breath won't go in. You're gonna do one, two breaths, all right? And remember you're doing those breaths over a one second time interval. We don't wanna do this, okay? Nothing's going in there. You're gonna do those nice slow breaths just like that. All right, so the heart rate monitor and, or sorry, the compression rate monitor and the compression depth monitor is what we're gonna look at next in the adult. You're gonna press the heel of hand on the center of the chest. You'll learn that in the CPR instruction. Um, if you're not compressing the chest far enough, uh, the lights won't turn on. If you're too slow, you'll see different types of flashing lights. I explained that in the video. Make sure you kind of hear the click and you'll feel the click when the compression depth is enough. And then make sure you allow the chest to completely recoil. You're gonna look for the lights on the top of the left shoulder, which will give you an indication as to if you were doing it correctly or incorrectly. Um, so the two green lights are what you want. 
they are indicating that your rate and depth are correct and that you're compressing at 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Usually what I see is either one flashing red light, which means you're not compressing deep enough, or uh, a flashing yellow in between the two green ones, which means you're going too fast. So those are the ones that I typically see um, when I'm using the mannequin. So what you're gonna be looking at when you're doing compression rate and depth for this adult Preston CPR mannequin are the light indicators at the top of the left shoulder. When I'm doing the correct compression rate and depth, you will see two green lights. If I'm going too fast, you'll see a yellow light flashing. And if I'm going too slow, you'll see a red uh, flasher if uh, my depth is not correct or if I'm going too slow. Remember the heel of your hand is gonna be in the center of the chest. Other hand on top. When you begin your compressions, you should see those two lights. Okay, the two green lights on the top left shoulder. Now you see that red light flashing because I've taken my hands off. Make sure you allow for full chest recoil. Um, but again, if I'm going too fast, you'll see this, that yellow flasher, too slow or too not getting enough compression, you'll see that red flasher. Okay, so we want to keep it on the two green lights. Remember our compression rate is 100 to 120 compressions per minute. All right, so for compressions for the infant, remember we've got two fingers just below the nipple line for the run rescuer CPR. For the two rescuer CPR, you're gonna use the thumb technique. I'm gonna show both of these on this video. You wanna look for the lights on the front of the diaper uh, or the diaper section for the compression feedback. Again, you wanna look for those two green lights indicating that your depth and compression rate are correct and 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Um, and then again, I'll go through the flashing lights and what, what those mean. Okay, next I'm gonna show the chest compressions for the Preston infant. Right, when we look at this infant, we can see he's got a green light there. What's going to happen when I'm doing the correct compression rate and depth? You're going to see two green lights on the side. If you see one green light, it means you're going too slow. If you see a yellow flasher in here, it means you're going too fast. When I lie him down like this, you can see that the lights go away. You can kind of see it a little bit. I think that's because of the overhead lights in the room. So I'm gonna pull the camera up so that you can see the lights a little better. There we've got the red light flashing saying, hey, nothing's happening. I'm gonna come right below that nipple line, two fingers right in the middle of the chest. And you can see I've got my double green light. If I go too slow, it's gonna give me the one green light or the yellow. If I go too fast, it's gonna flash yellow, okay? So that's what the light indicators mean on that. Remember, you're gonna do 30 compressions. Remember, when we switch to two rescuer CPR, we're gonna have one person up by the head doing the rescue breathing. The other person is going to switch to the two thumb, call this two thumb encircling hands technique. You also switch to 15 compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
14, 15, and breathe, and breathe, and one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and breathe, and breathe. All right, so you can see um, we're gonna use the AED for the next one. That's used during two rescuer CPR. The second rescuer is the one who's responsible for bringing the AED in. And um, they're basically in charge of the whole thing, unzipping the bag, turning it on, getting the wires out, <coughs> sorry, getting the pads out <coughs> and attaching the pads and then following the prompts. We're gonna look at using the AED. This is one that we have in class here, the practice trainer. It's pretty straightforward, I like this one. Not a lot of buttons. You're gonna open it up. You're the second rescuer coming to the scene. Inside here, you're gonna see the unit, the AED. You need the AED. You need the cords to attach to the patient and you need the pads to attach to the patient. When you get there, the first thing you're going to do is turn this button on. It's going to tell you what to do. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. If you look at these pads, they show you the location where they are supposed to go on the person's body. Apply pads to, make sure they're to patient's bare chest. Correctly connected. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Okay. At this point, somebody should be doing CPR. Apply pads. Plug in connector. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Shock advised. When it Charging. says shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. All right, I'm Press gonna say- Press the orange button now. Everyone clear, all clear. Make sure no one's touching the patient. And then shock I'm gonna shock delivered. the patient. It is safe to touch the patient. And then you're gonna resume CPR. Begin CPR. These pads are gonna stay on here and you're gonna keep going with CPR. To turn this device off, just hit the green button. All right, so hopefully that will give you some idea of what you are um, going to be looking at it, at least for the equipment. You can go back over it and look at it. Uh, the main things are the um, the lights for the compression, the compression rate and depth, um, and then just knowing how to turn on and off the device.